But you saw the one nine. I don't. It, what about pushing on a string? Is this good? Are we happy? Will, will it help? I'm not happy. I think I'm it helps with currency, doesn't it? It helps uh, us with exports. Yeah, at, the, at the margin, but this is mostly a domestic services economy, so exports aren't really the big thing. I, I'm fine that I'm in a minority of not very many at the moment. I don't think they need to cut. You know, that timeline that Steve so just showed. Me. Yeah, so I don't think they need to cut. No, the, sign, the, the timeline that Steve showed, you know, with, with the summit with, with Xi, I think that'll be... I think it will be a positive outcome. I think they both need a deal. They both need a success. I don't think the tariffs will go up on July 1. I think the employment report on July 5 will be fine. Uh, and I think that um, the second quarter GDP number will be fine. If all that happens, yeah. do they cut? Because well, we think we've been promised to cut, but yeah, if all of that happens... There's an element of contingency there. So the market says 100%. I mean, there's not many things in life that are 100%. And if all those things play out the way I think they will, and the S&P, let's say, I don't know, it's 5 or 6 or 7% higher by the time of the July 31 meeting, maybe they don't cut. I don't think they need to. The economy, to me, looks pretty fine, provided trade doesn't blow up. If trade blows up, I would a different story. Absolutely, they ease, no question. Mike, what do you think? I think if by the, the July meeting, if uh, the, the yield curve is still upside down, and that would be two months of that, I think that what the Fed signaled today would really lead to a high likelihood that they do cut. I don't, but that doesn't mean that isn't the same as saying they should or need to. But is that happening because in. traders are going to throw a temper tantrum that? and say we want this? Or is well, this happening because just relative to every other yield? Uh, and every well, that's other part of it. Around the well, look, I mean, that's been the case for a long time. And that's kind of waxed and waned. I, I do think that um, that, that logic of when you only have 250 basis points to work with to zero, you might as well use them now. And the way the markets are structured right now, they're saying it's going to be a soft landing. They're going to cut a little bit. It's not going to be an easing cycle down to zero. Hey, Beck. The economy doesn't need rescuing. And by the way, stocks love a 2%, 2% world. 2% sure. sure. growth, 2% yields. Steve, what's happened? Yeah, no, I, I think that uh, all of the things that Ian said could break to the upside or be stronger than expected with perhaps if you have continued inflationary pressure to the downside, the Fed could still cut. I'd have to think about what the kind of tolerance would be. But if you show that this, uh, dec remember that Powell yesterday, when he talked about inflation, did not use the word transitory. That was not in there. In fact, they sounded a little bit more worried about the drift of expectations to the downside. So I probably should alter my calendar to the cut graphic and put a CPI or a PCE a date in there, because I think that's going to be important, too, uh, although it's going to be a little bit hard to have all that strong data and uh, uh, lower inflation have the Fed cut. It's going to be it's a close call. And I think that's why the Fed didn't specifically cut yesterday. I think the stock market is fine with the next th that they're going to try to be preemptive or they're going to try to be accommodative and listen to what the markets are saying, whether it absolutely happens in July or not. And the last thing that Powell said yesterday is, oh, by the way, if we do do something accommodative, it may just be that we don't mess with the balance sheet quite as much. Maybe we let some of that ride, and, and that's our way of easing policy. What would you yeah. think of that? I, that? That makes sense. I mean, if you're going to do it, do the thing that has the most obvious signal. I mean, everybody understands if you cut rates, it's a very unambiguous, clear, positive signal. There's no question about what you're doing and why you're doing it. So I think that makes perfect sense to me if, if they do it. But, you know, again, maybe they don't. I just pick up on what Steve said, you know, inflation, he didn't say transitory, which he, he said a lot last month, and he also didn't talk about how some other measures of inflation are going up, like the Dallas Fed trimmed mean, which he, he, he talked about last time, and everyone, ah, right, we've got to look at this now. Yesterday, no mention. Now, that's gone up in the last three months, while the PCE has gone down. So, you know, where is the focus? It seems to me that given that they moved their PCE forecast down uh, yesterday by quite a bit for this year, maybe this transitory idiosyncratic thing, maybe they're having a bit of a rethink and think, well, actually, maybe it's permanent. But, you know, I look at that Dallas Fed measure, three-month annualized rate is 2.4. It's at the highest in 11 years. Steve, yeah. Steve, I think that the market is like saying, you know, is like saying, I can't believe the Fed is falling for this. <laughs> You know, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're Joe, the, the Fed's going up uh, like they should have last year. We got to get back I, to normal. I think they that's a clever a big, comment. No, they, think, they throw up a big, they throw a big tantrum in December. It's like let's try right. this, but they'll never buy right. it. And then all it's, of a sudden they go, you know, you're right, market. Maybe we'll never raise again. We may, and the market's like, are you kidding me? You guys classic, are buying, huh? It's a classic. We can have our cake and eat it too. And I've been talking about this, you know, this exacta and this trifecta that the market's kind of betting on. So the first thing is we get a trade deal or no worse outcomes on trade. The second uh, thing, the, the bottom of the exacta is we get the rate cut. The trifecta would be we get 
no worse on trade or better on trade. We get the rate cut and you don't get the economic weakness. In that case, you know, Joe, that's like the market laughing all the way to the bank. It's on. like it's like that's true, though, if we think of the right. market as the actor here, but people, but individual investors and professional investors are extremely pessimistic and defensive. And that's why the market's going up. Because, because they have not been positioned for a great it, time. And I think when you have corporate bond yields back to where they were in early 2018, right. the math says however we got here, stocks probably aren't going to get you in trouble right, right. now. It's like you, you're trying to track your parents. Yeah, we're going, but there's no no other parents are going. The concert, it's going to go to about 3 a.m. And there's going to be no adult, And your parents are like, no way. And then uh, suddenly you see a crack where they go, well, are, are you, you talking sure? about dead and company? Are you Joe? sure you're, yeah. Are you sure Jen you're going to be home Camden. at 3? And the kids go, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Uh, you're Cameron. really like going to had this conversation. Yeah, I know. I have. It's like, yeah, right. Recently, <laughs> but as the parent.